Today, we're going to be looking at one of my favorite sections of Colonel Forbin's Ascent. And this is all tied into my shows I'm doing coming up at the cutting room during Fish's Baker's Dozen Run at Madison Square Garden. I'm gonna be doing the entire Game Hunch Suite on the first and last Sunday. So um, in the meantime, while I'm practicing for it, I'm gonna take you guys behind the scenes on the arranging process of some of these songs. So this is one of my favorite parts in Colonel Forbin's Ascent, and I'm gonna walk you through the process here. So that phrase is really cool because um, I have the melody here. And the lyrics for this section are, and he dragged his weary shit ass up the mountain. So um, I have that melody and in, in the left hand, in the bass line here, I'm gonna have it moving up the keyboard um, like we're going up the mountain. Kind of literal, but whatever, so. And then Paige has these chords up high too, continuing the upward motion. So that's all happening. Um, unfortunately though, with the bass line and Paige's chords, I'm already out of hand. So what I'm doing here is starting out with the bass line and the melody in my right hand, bass line here, melody here. And halfway through, I'm gonna have the left hand take over the melody so that the right hand can play these uh, chords that Paige plays up high. And then at the end of the phrase, the right hand is gonna come steal the melody back so that the left hand can get that low bass support. Um, so it sounds like this. Left hand takes the melody. Right hand takes the melody. And in all of this section, it's really important because there's multiple layers going on that um, I give the most weight to the melody line. So sometimes I'm carrying um, the chords and the harmony and melody in the same hand and it all is going to sound like a big jumbled chopped up mess unless I really um, bring the melody line out to soar above all that other stuff so to really lean into those particular fingers even when the rest of my hand is doing something else so then um, in the next section there's three phrases that follow each other and each one builds in intensity so this whole thing is getting bigger and bigger and bigger um, in the first one, I have the melody here and the bass line here. Um, but that sounds really hollow, just having those two parts. The thing that's really missing here is those really staccato, punchy, um, driving chords that Trey plays in this section. So if I add those in, starts to have more forward momentum and it also fills out the sound a lot so we're hearing all these parts. Um, the tricky thing about here is that I have to keep the melody line legato and connected and smooth otherwise the notes are going to sound like they're disconnected from each other and they aren't going to have uh, a solid line where they feel like they're part of one thing that's being sung. So usually I might use the pedal to help out with that but here I can't do that because <laughs> the effect of these chords. It makes it too muddy and just um, too blurry and it doesn't have like the, the punch and the, uh, the really like the sparkle that that section should have. So um, I have to do it with finger legato. Sometimes I'll use finger substitutions, stuff like that so that I can keep the sound that the guitar part should have there. I'm moving the, um, in the, this is the second of those three phrases, um, I'm going to move the chords to the left hand. So I have two parts here. I have the bass giving support and I have the guitar chords. That frees up my right hand to play the vocal line, the melody, but also the harmonies that layer on top of it. 
And this phrase, I'm gonna start to bring in the pedal a little bit because I wanna build the intensity, build the volume, and just round out the sound a little bit more so that it's getting fuller and bigger as the um, song progresses here. So. So now I'm gonna take all the parts that were happening in both my hands and move them all to my left hand. So I have the bass, the guitar chords, the vocal line, and the vocal harmonies. And I'm putting all those in one hand so that my right hand is free to move up and do these really cool arpeggios that Paige does at the top of the piano. So all together. And then all of these phrases, um, after building and building and building and building, um, collapse and fall down on top of each other in this big pile of dissonance and chaos. And that's um, part of why I love this section so much. It's this build and build and build, and then there's just this contrast of the momentum and then this giant pile of darkness, um, which then breaks free into a major key again after all of that craziness. So here's how it all sounds together. Thank you. 